All right, welcome to uh, day three of 4.6. Uh, as you'll see in today's notes, pretty much a review of what we did the first two days. Um, so thus the video today um, that you can watch in, at your own leisure and, and repeat as you need to or stop as you need to. So we're going to start. Our first slide is really going to be just a review of where we ended uh, yesterday. So that was this rational equation. You can see here that we had uh, two different binomials, 2q plus 3, 2q minus 3 in our denominator. So our common denominator is going to be the product of those two, which is what you see right here. In order to eliminate our fractions, we are going to multiply the entire equation, each term, by that 2q plus 3, 2q minus 3. So that's the work that you see uh, right here. Once we distribute and combine our like terms, we got down to a quadratic. And again, this was uh, the last slide of yesterday's notes, so you should see this before, but if not, you can go back through. So we multiply through, combine our like terms, we get to a quadratic. At this point, this will not factor um, this 4q squared plus 12q minus 9. So now we have to either complete the square or do the quadratic formula. I highly advise that you do the quadratic formula. So that's what I did here um, with this particular one. And as you can see here, um, we do the quadratic formula. And I'm going to move myself out of the way there. There you go. Uh, we do the quadratic formula. And we get down to negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 288 over 8. You can certainly get decimal equivalents. That's what I suggest right there. Two or three decimal places is perfect. Um, so we get our answer. So again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one just because we ended the hour with it. I wanted to throw it up there. Uh, in case you missed it or needed to see it again. Okay, partial fractions. So we'll see this uh, a few times as we go. Um, we'll have this one and another one. When in doubt, you factor the denominator here. So this is going to be x times x minus 2. And so you can see those two pieces here. It doesn't matter which order you do these. If you want to put the x minus 2 here and the x here, that's fine. Uh, if you did that, then your A and B values are going to be flip-flop from mine, but that's fine. So again, this, this x squared minus 2x factored into these two pieces. So I put A over one factor, B over the other. Again, the order here doesn't matter. When I multiply through, the same result always happens with, with all of these. So you'll notice I don't show as much work here. I will always get the numerator, in this case x minus 6, equal to a times x minus 2 and b times x. So you always get the numerator times the other factor equal to the numerator of the first fraction. So you see that right here. So here's our numerator, x minus 6, a times x minus 2, b times x. Once we get to this point here, again, we've got three variables. You see we've got x, we've got a, we've got b. We want to strategically pick x values uh, so that we can eliminate a or b. So I'm going to use 2 here for x. The reason I'm going to use 2 is that will make it 0a. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to put 0 in for x because that will make it 0b. And then I can solve for the other quantity. So you can see we plug those values in. and get our subsequent values for A and B. Once we have our values for A and B, uh, we are just about finished with this problem. Our final step is to take those two values and write them back in. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we have our original fraction x minus 6 over x squared minus 2x. And I will replace a with its numerical value of 3 and b with its value of negative 2. And now I have these two fractions, the two parts that make up the whole. On the next slide, we're going to do another example of this just so we have the practice and you see it. I, th I think this is one of those things. Um, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it, and the little faster, a little more streamlined the process gets. 
uh, so the extra practice won't hurt us. All right, so again, you see our rational fraction, uh, which just means we have variables in numerator, denominator, that's fine. So m squared minus 4, hopefully you recognize that as a difference of squares. That's going to be m minus 2, m plus 2, or again, the order doesn't matter. If you did m plus 2, m minus 2, that's fine. So I put m minus 2 first, but again, it doesn't matter. If you, if you flip-flop these, then you're just going to get the opposite answer for, for a and b, and that's fine, because um, we're adding these fractions together anyways. So again, you see I have a and b over the two parts that make the denominator. When I multiply, again, I'm going to end up with the numerator, 5m minus 4, equal to a times m plus 2, and b times m minus 2. Again, I want to strategically pick values, in this case for m, so that I can get a 0 to eliminate a or b. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 first, and then I'm going to plug in positive 2. And again, that will eliminate a to allow us to solve for b, and then eliminate b to allow us to solve for a. Now, this is the first time we're going to see this here where we don't get uh, integers for A and B. That's okay. If you get decimals, don't worry about it. Uh, not all partial fractions are going to work out perfectly. Uh, if you want to make this 7 halves instead of 3.5, you can, but typically we won't write a fraction over a fraction. But, again, that, that's okay if that's what you get for A and B. Um, so I put negative 2 in here. Again, that, that makes this 0A, uh, allows me to solve for B. And then I plug positive 2 in for m, and that makes 0b, which allows me to solve for a. We find out that a is 1 and a half, and b is 3 and a half. Then our final step is to just take these two numbers and write them in there, which is what you're going to see next. Like so. So again, Partial fractions, one of those things, the more we do it, the more comfortable we get, uh, the more practice we have. Like anything in math, the more practice you have, the stronger you're going to get with that, and the easier it's going to get over time. All right, I got two more slides for today. One is just a review of our steps for uh, rational inequalities. And again, just to review that, if we need to, we're going to factor. Now we're going to identify our critical points, which is the zeros of the inequality and any undefined values. We do our number line and test points, and finally we state our solution in interval notation. So when we look at this uh, equality for today, uh, first of all, you notice that it's not uh, greater than zero, it's greater than seven. So our first step is we're going to have to move the seven over so that we have a inequality that in this case is greater than zero. If you look at the denominator here, you can see that negative one is going to give us an undefined value. And so that's our very first uh, critical point, if you will. Y cannot equal negative one. And again, that's because it will make this undefined. Now, to find the zero of this particular inequality, we actually have to multiply uh, through by y plus 1. So we're actually going to have to solve this. So I'll show you that step below here. So we're going to multiply the entire inequality by y plus 1. We'll treat it like an equation at this point. Um, so I get right here. Once I distribute and solve, find out that y is 0. Um, now, normally we would use our 0 value, but you can see this is greater than. So because there's no equal to, I cannot use that 0 value either. So both my 0 and my undefined values uh, are both excluded in this case because this is greater than 0. So we'll slide over here momentarily to our number line, and we are going to have a dotted line at negative 1 and 0 to break our number line into our intervals. So I'll scroll back up here momentarily so you can see that. But again, this is my 
restricted value, y can't equal negative 1 because it's undefined. And I solve this here to get my 0, uh, which happened to be 0. And we can't use that either because it's greater than. All right, we'll scroll up here to the number line. So you see we are restricted values break the number line into three intervals. Uh, we have everything less than negative 1, points between negative 1 and 0, and then everything greater than 0. So I'm going to type the left side of this inequality into my calculator. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, make sure you do parentheses. So put a parentheses around the 7 divided by parentheses around y plus 1 and then minus 7. Go to my table. I'm going to pick a number less than negative 1. I pick negative 2. And I got a negative number. Pick a number between 0 and negative 1. I just did negative 1 half. And I got a positive. A number greater than 0, I used 1. And I got a negative. Sorry about that. Let me go back up here. And so now you can see my number line is broken into three intervals. I got negatives here, negative answers, positive and negative. I need the greater than zero. So that is going to be our positive interval. And that is negative one. Oh, excuse me. There we go. That is negative one to zero. And again, because I can't use either number, uh, that's why we have parentheses here. So that's your day three notes, you know, pretty much review. Uh, your homework is to finish up that 4-6 worksheet. Uh, if you have that done already, then you're all set. Uh, if not, please make sure you uh, get that completed before our next class, and then we will jump into 4-7 next time we meet. All right, take care. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.